Welcome to the overview video for the prefab and object manager. So we can see the finished prefab and object manager here. We're going to create this from scratch, but first I'm going to show you a way to equip the character without using the prefab and object manager. Instead, for situations where you just want to equip something and you can turn it on and off manually, or maybe you're not going to turn off the wardrobe at all. And the uh, prefab and object manager is just overkill for that project. So let's get started with that. All right, so in this first one, we've just got the base body for the male character here, the male human. So let's bring in some of the clothing. All right, so as we can see, we've got the clothing here, and obviously this helmet is not looking right. Everything else looks right, but if we were to press play now, we'll notice that the wardrobe isn't going to be actually animating with the character. Uh, they just sits there, and that's because each one of these wardrobe pieces has its own bone structure, and we need to link these to the main character's bone structure. And that's all set up for us, so all we have to do is go up here to Infinity PBR and say Equip Object, and that's going, whoops, and I zoomed all the way out, but that's going to equip all of these objects, and now we can see the helmet is in the right position, and if we expand these, these objects now are missing their root structure and they're not mapped to the bone root here and we can press play and we can see that they are all currently working with the animation so if this is the type of object you want where you know you can still turn these on and off if you if you want to customize the character but you're not going to be bringing the objects in and out during runtime if you're really just having a few different wardrobe pieces then this is probably an easier way um, to manage it, or at least one easy way to manage it, and certainly easier if you're not going to be changing the wardrobe at all. But if you are going to change the wardrobe, you should use the Prefab and Object Manager. So let's go ahead and set that up here. I've reset all of these, and if you visit infinitypbr.com and click on the scripting docs, we're going to be following along the equipment systems down here. I'm still populating some of these as the time of this video is being made, but the Prefab and Object Manager is here, with all the information about this module itself, uh, including some information if you've already started using my stuff and are upgrading to this one. There might be a few small things that you need to uh, fix in your reg in your scripts, your custom scripts. Uh, and so definitely check out this documentation. There's a whole lot here. Everything we're going to talk about here, and maybe a little bit more, is actually listed here, as well as some scripting examples so you can understand how to script it as well, because it's very easy. Now I'm going to collapse the wardrobe prefab manager. While the data the data here is managed by the prefab and object manager, um, so we don't really need to do much here. These two toggles are really the only important things. They're automatically set to true, and this says that we're going to automatically rig any objects like these that come in, and we're also going to handle blend shapes on those objects when they are instantiated, both at runtime and edit time. So I'm going to collapse that for now. We've got a few different options here. We've got help boxes, so if you want to see some more information, you can get that. Um, showing the full inspector. The instantiate prefabs when added to group means that when we add something to a group, it's going to show up right here in the editor. It's a great way of just visualizing things and seeing what you're working with. Also, we want to keep this one group active per type set to be true and to unpack the prefabs when instantiated. So let's start by creating a new group. I'm just going to call this base wardrobe. And we're going to create this as a type uh, called uh, body. So now if we go to group types, we have our body. So if I want to change that to body with an S, I could do that. And then all the types with body will be changed uh, automatically, but we don't want to do that. So we've got our base wardrobe and I'm going to click this to be default, which means that once we have multiple body objects, and whatever's default will always be active if nothing else is active. So the first thing I'm going to do is click objects to expand this. And this little, little yellow area is where we're going to drop our objects. So our objects down here, these are the wardrobe. I'm going to take the trousers from the male and I'm going to take the shirt from the elf character. So we're going to add in the shirt and the sleeves. And as you can see, it is being activated as we go along. So this is going to be our base wardrobe for the body. Not bad. I'm going to create another new group. I'm going to call this um, shoes and we're going to call this on type feet. Uh, similarly, and since I add a type that got rearranged by uh, name here, so we're going to open the objects here, make this a default. And for this, I'm going to bring in the half orcs shoes. So very basic shoes compared to boots. There we go. 
And we're going to do a couple other things. I want to do something for the hands and for the head. So I'm going to create two new groups. We can call one hands and type uh, head. And then we're going to call this no head and no hands. And these are going to be the defaults as well. And they're going to be empty. I'm not going to add any objects to those. But for the hands group, I'm going to add two new ones. I'm going to add gloves and I'm going to add gaunt lets. And for these, we're going to open up both of these uh, objects here. And on the human male, we've got gloves. So I'm going to add gloves to all of them. And the gauntlets kind of look better with the gloves on. In my opinion, you can kind of see the gaunt gloves underneath those. So I'm going to add those to the gauntlets as well. And we're going to add the gauntlets here. So all four of those objects are activated. So now you see that there. And I'm going to close that. Whoop, make that default. I'm going to close these objects. And now I'm going to show you what happens when you click these activates. Now you can activate and it will go between these three. Now this is just calling the activate method in the prefab and object manager script. The deactivation is happening automatically because we have that only one per type allowed uh, toggle is turned on. That way, if I activate gloves, then gauntlets will turn off. Or if I activate gauntlets, then gloves will turn off right now. And if I deactivate uh, gauntlets, then the active one will be uh, shapes, which is no hands. I got these backwards. No hand and no head. All right. So the names do need to be unique. All right. So let's do the same now for the feet. We're going to close those objects. We're going to add a couple new feet. We're going to call those boots and armored boots and open those up. For the boots, we have our human male boots here. So I'm just going to bring in the boot left and boot right. And for this one, I'm also going to bring on these flaps left and right. And again, as I do this, you can see them popping up here in the scene in, that, in game view. And then on the armored boots, I'm going to bring in the same two boots. And as I do this, it's going to activate that so that we can see what we're doing. That's pretty nice. And then I'm also going to bring in these uh, objects here, shin balds and the sabatons for the feet. There we go. And again, we can activate and go between these and we can deactivate to go back to the shoes, or we can activate the shoes, of course, to go to them as well. And the other thing is the head. I want to add a new one, Parbut. That's our helmet. Again, we'll bring that from this human. Bring that in there now, and there it is. And now it got rigged, so it looks right because it's automatically rigged. This script does that equip character uh, method. It does that automatically whenever any of these are activated. We're going to go ahead and activate the uh, base one there. And finally, for the body, we're going to add a couple more. Uh, we will add a new body group and a new body group, and we'll call these um, leather armor or leather vest, rather, because it's not really armor. And then curious. In some cases, you might want to switch out some of the body parts. And so we're going to keep the trousers on both of these. We're not changing those out. And for the leather vest, we're actually going to keep the shirt as well. So I'm going to bring the shirt and the sleeves back in there. And for the same uh, package here, the elf armor, I'm going to bring in the elf vest. So that's our vest. And then for the curious, I'm going to bring in the shirt as well and the sleeves as well. And we're going to bring in the curious. There's our curious. Now, if uh, for all three of these, of course, we've got, you know, the shirt and the sleeves and the pants are the same one. So why didn't we just change out the top two? That's a good good question that you didn't ask. But I'm going to answer it anyways. Because in some cases, whoops, barbarian. In some cases, you're going to not want any of those things. So in this case, we can add the, uh, we'll go back to our human armor here. We can add the skirt, gladiator belt, spalder here. Yeah. This comes with three different pieces, so we'll add all three. Maybe we want our knee pads here as well, you know, since the knees are exposed now. So now we've got uh, a completely different look that doesn't have those. So when we switch from any of these that do have the pants, they'll have pants, skirt, etc. And so we're essentially adding duplicates because each one of these is itself its own group of content. That's how you set it up. It's very easy. And there's additional things that we can do now. I'm going to go through. So we're going to go ahead and expose the shapes here. Now this is the blend shapes on the blend shapes manager. 
that we can work with. The top row here will have shapes directly associated with the wardrobe and the items in the objects list, and the global shapes will be all the other shapes that you could possibly uh, activate here. So we're going to do a couple things. This, this handles saying shape values on activate and on deactivate. And so on activate here, I'm going to add arm muscles. And then for the deactivate, I'm going to click this revert back. And one thing to notice, notice is that when you do uh, select one of these, and we'll say the Spalder right shape, the other one changes as well. So if you can click add to list and then revert back right afterwards to add this revert. This makes it revert to its pre-activation value, which is a pretty common thing to do here. Uh, and now for this one, I can say that I want the arm muscles to be bigger and we're going to set it to be explicitly bigger. And then for the Spalder shape, again, we're just going to set that to be what we want. In this case, I'll just bring it all the way up to 100, makes it a little bit longer. And then for the arm muscles, I'm going to add a similar one for the base wardrobe. Um, we're going to add that revert to list and I'm just going to bring that down there. So we're going to set that pretty low. We'll activate that. And then when we close these out, just to clean it up. Now, when we activate the barbarian, the muscles go up. And when we activate the base wardrobe, they go down. When we activate the um, barbarian here and then this, they're back medium. Again, they go down for that, etc. So now we're also managing the actual blend shapes themselves. And again, when you're scripting this, all you do is call activate group, the group name, whatever this name is here, and all of this is done for you. You set it up once, and all you have to do is call that activate button later. And that's what the prefab in Object Manager is meant to do. For characters, you can always use this for anything else as well. Props, uh, things on a table, um, the actual furniture and other things inside of a room. If you want to have one room with many different layouts, you can create those layouts as, as prefabs and um, or as objects if they're already attached to this and you can set them that way. Um, now, once you do have uh, the objects set here, I should mention you can use the uh, prefab manager here as well. We can create a new group and on the objects here, we will add in things like, well, all of these. And now we can choose to activate or deactivate them with this as well. So this mixes and matches with in-game objects as well as prefabs. You can have any number of either of them in the list. If I were to add this to here, then you'd see that there is a transform and that's a transform it will be attached to. Um, if you wanted to, you could attach this to something else as well so that you can bring in a prefab and have it attached to a different transform than the base transform. That's a great way to attach things to different bones, like if you have a weapon bone or a shield, bo shield bone, or just a hand bone that you want a weapon to show up into. That's a great way of doing that. So you don't have to have them just listed here. They can go el elsewhere as well. So there's a lot you can do with this. Um, definitely check out the uh, scripting docs and check out infinitypbr.com. There's also a link to the Discord, which has lots of people talking about fun game dev stuff. So definitely check that out as well. Like, subscribe, get in contact if you need anything, and uh, have a great day. Thanks!